So let's get started. I'm sure a few more people will join. Um, so we have, uh, looks like uh, 16 people total among, with three, one, two, three guests, um, Chaim, Stash, and Mike. Um, we have a new member. Sharon, you, you're a new member, right? Absolutely. Sharon's uh, one of our newest members. Welcome. Thank you. And um, today we have um, Ran Mullins is going to be presenting on the topic of um, RevOps uh, and being RevOps ready. Uh, I think this is the first time anybody's really spoken on RevOps broadly as opposed to uh, you know a specific function or feature. Um, and um, we have, for the benefit of our guests, I, I don't want to forget this. Um, this is the Trusted Referral Network. Um, so we are a group of about 100, and, it's up to about 190 now, if we go on the website, 190 members. We're all marketing services providers um, or sales services providers. Uh, majority has a few categories that are sales oriented. Um, and we meet uh, once a week. We alternate between Tuesday evenings, 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that's this meeting, and then the uh, other uh, the, on the alternating week, it's Wednesday at 11 a.m. Uh, and our objective is to get to know one another, uh, build relationships that can turn into business relationships, and of course, personal relationships. Um, that's always an added bonus, um, and uh, also, you know, learn from one another. And that's what this first session, uh, the first 15 minutes, is all about. Uh, where we have somebody go and deep dive, deeper dive into what they do or something they've learned uh, that they want to share with the rest of, of the group. Um, so we'll start with that. And then we'll probably have around two minutes each um, to do uh, intros, which um, the idea behind the intros is you get to know a little bit more about each person, and then you can decide who you want to follow up with. Um, so I will encourage people to put their LinkedIn or any other contact information into the chat uh, so that folks can download it at the end. That's a good way to connect. Uh, of course, you can always ask me if you forget the person's name. Um, I can always uh, make that connection. Or you can look up, if you remember their company name, you can look up um, their company on the Trusted Referral Network site if they are a member. So I am going to put my timer on um, for 15 minutes. Uh, and Rand, you could take it away and you should be able to access the, um, I, I did make the screen shareable. Okay. Go for it. Great. So Rand Mullins, um, I am the CEO of Reliquent. Uh, this is my third agency. Um, I had a full service agency for 12 years uh, um, that I ran from 97 through 2009, and then I worked on my own for a bit before joining another uh, agency, which was the first inbound agency that I, I worked with. And um, using HubSpot, I grew that one 500% in the first 18 months, and then um, started Reliquent in 2015. And we've been focused primarily on inbound marketing for the past seven, eight years. And more recently, we've been delving into RevOps. And we really started into RevOps because a lot of the clients that we're producing sales accepted and sales qualified leads for were not either um, following up on those or really acting on them from a sales perspective or many of them, whenever they first would come to us, did not have their house in order for us to be able to really begin content marketing, uh, whether it's the website or their messaging, et cetera. So the way that we have looked at uh, revenue operations is really, you know, it's not a new term, but RevOps as we're seeing it today and where the automation is taking it to is really changing. And so, you know, we're big proponents of HubSpot, but that doesn't mean that you need HubSpot in order to do RevOps. It just is more integrated uh, when you can connect marketing, sales, and service hubs. Um, can certainly do it with Marketo and with Salesforce. And uh, we've even helped out with um, 
Eloqua and Oracle and but really moving from more of a siloed uh, discipline around the customer to the revenue operations surrounding the customer and then the discipline serving the revenue operations. So I'll get into that in a moment of how we become more customer first. Um, but really it is about that customer first experience. So in terms of Revenue team alignment, getting marketing, sales, and customer success to work together. And uh, with Reliquent, the majority of our clients are in the 50 to 500 million revenue range. Um, although we have a few at a billion, we've got uh, some startups that have all continued on uh, through my network and we're helping them through the various stages. It, it's funny, whenever uh, they're really looking at the full customer journey, it's sometimes easier to start with the younger ones because they don't have as much in place to rip out and change and <laughs> rebuild. So in terms of the convergence of marketing sales and customer success, um, we're really looking at is the first stage is really what you might use the marketing hub for, which is the validation. So it's really in the attract piece. Um, one of the things that differs about our approach from Gartner and HubSpot is that when they're a stranger, we really do look at the brand and the brand positioning and everything that we can do for when we can't track them. When they're, they might be a lead, but the things that they're doing or how they're seeing us, uh, we can't necessarily track, uh, but we can control some of those things. So that's everything from um, making sure you're talking to the right ideal customer profile, the right buyer persona, but then the positioning uh, around the messaging, who we are, how we think, what we do, how we do it, who we do it for and what we sell. So that alignment and making sure that messaging is on and it's uh, resonating. So as you start to bring that marketing message out and they're going from a stranger to a suspect, um, it's through the demand gen. So everything from the outbound calling and uh, LinkedIn messaging, uh, it might be the live chat on the website, might be PR or events where we're really identifying that, okay, they're a marketing qualified lead. We get it. Um, and then moving from a suspect to a prospect, this is really where the lead gen comes into play. And this has been our sweet spot because really this is the area where we can identify sales accepted leads. And this is where it really overlaps with the sales hub when it comes to HubSpot. So we, we've structured a funnel, we're driving traffic from the demand gen into that funnel. Now we're going to really qualify uh, that these leads are accepted by sales. And it's only been over the past 24 to 36 months that we've instituted the SAL in place because we, we were going straight from marketing qualified leads to sales qualified leads. And certainly that was the, the HubSpot uh, <laughs> mantra. But um really working with the clients, sales wasn't always willing to say that they are sales qualified leads that come in from inbound. Um, so what we did is identify the criteria and identify that they are sales accepted leads. They meet all the criteria that sales said. But what we found is, is that sales doesn't accept them as or bless them as sales qualified leads until there's something to go into the pipeline. There's some opportunity to be had that they're ready uh, to buy or at least to start to talk about buying so that a pipeline can be created and whatever point that they come in, you know, they might put them in at $5,000 on the pipeline to begin with because they start to have some back and forth with them. But ultimately, you know, we've met the sales accepted lead and now they're moving into sales qualified lead. We want to get them from a sales qualified lead moving into a deal. Uh, so get some real deal on the table with real amounts connected to it. So they move from an opportunity to being a buyer and ultimately getting that close. So from that close, then they become a customer. That's where delivery begins. And that's where we're really measuring the net promoter score. We're measuring how satisfied are they with that first transaction, with that first encounter of this is where you get beyond sales and you got the rest of the company behind you and they're starting to deliver and um, how satisfied is that customer? 
So this is overlaps perfectly with the service hub. This is where there is this handshake between sales and service that is happening and everything's been promised by sales is getting delivered. And then the sales guy's got to make sure that um, it's actually being delivered to the specs that they had promised. Ultimately, we want to move them from a customer to a client. So we want that initial transaction to turn into recurring revenue, right? And we want retention, we want renewals. And ultimately we want lookalikes. So we need them to be an advocate for us. They're gonna be an influencer, whether it's expanding in their own company, um, whether it's providing additional referrals, we want more of those. So uh, all this making sense right now? Yeah, and if there are questions, folks, uh, please. Um, do you want people to chime in with questions or wait? Yeah, till, uh... yeah, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. I know it's a, okay. a lot of information in a short period of time, but um, yeah. And also, you could add questions into the the chat yeah. if you have. Yeah. Hey, have Ren, yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. So, so this is really great. And I have to because I know nothing about RevOps. Uh, I can barely spell RevOps, but I, I like the way you've laid this out. And I guess my question is, is this kind of like, if you put this in front of any RevOps person, would they agree with this? Is this like industry standard so or is this that, proprietary? Where I, yes. So that's where I said I've vetted this or these steps with Gartner, with um, actually a number of uh, fractional COOs that I work with and change management professionals uh, as well that are working in RevOps regularly. And they do validate this. There are some things about it that we've got our own spin on or we're looking at it through our lens. Um, the journey is the journey though. I think what, what maybe uh, we're doing at Reliquent is to make it more digestible because it's typically so complicated. It's really difficult people for people to wrap their mind around it. Um, and you know, what we really want to do is focus on what is the customer's experience at each one of these stages, because oftentimes these steps are separated and you've got different groups working on the different things. And so you miss that continuity for what is the experience of that customer with the company throughout all of these stages until, you know, they're really becoming an advocate for us. Okay. Right, and so you. what oh, we do, we oh, I'm sorry, did that, did that answer? Yeah, yeah, it did. But then it's interesting because the next slide looks pretty complicated. <laughs> well, what it is, is that each one of these stages, you really have to do an assessment. There's the business side of it. There's consulting piece to each stage where you identify where the gaps are. You identify what are the opportunities or the missed opportunities. And then um, you work that into the content that is missing. You work that into, is there automation that can happen here? Can I reduce the human uh, requirements or touch points at each one of the stages? And it starts to get into checklists. Like you literally, what is the minimum that we have to do at each one of these stages in order to satisfy? And again, this is really about satisfying one customer uh, type at a time, one buyer persona at a time. So really thinking about their entire journey through and then customizing that for each one. What is this? Uh, go back to that, uh, if you could. Um, sure. what, is the, what is the vertical axis supposed to be? Is that? Uh, yeah, so the, the pink line is really the information. And we try and keep blogging to be information only, not fluff, not marketing pieces, not selling the company, you might put a press release in there from time to time, but ultimately you want it to be answering questions. And if they're coming in on that information, real information, then you wanna work your calls to action throughout that so that then there are clicks to landing pages and um, you're moving them through. But ultimately you wanna keep the information very much uh, answering questions that they're going to Google to <laughs> ask. Or to chat, chat GPT to ask maybe not. But <laughs> I ran it's Leslie. I have a question. So how do you identify where they are on the buyer's journey mm -hmm. relative to where your sales team is? To me, it's like 
the unanswerable question, but what, what do you have to say about that in terms of relevant? Like where that customer is? Yeah. Yeah. Are they so, in the awareness phase? Yeah. How do you identify that? It, so a lot of that happens in the lead gen. So that's where the qualification and that real validation is happening. Mm -hmm. So you, you provide you provide triggers for them to self-select and they're telling you. So if, if they're downloading the educational white paper versus the really detailed case study, they're telling you which stage that they're in of the funnel at that time. But most of that is happening in the lead gen because before that, they're responding to demand gen. All we know is that they're a marketing qualified lead. We don't know which stage of the funnel they're at yet. It's just something that we put out there they responded to. So that's what you know makes them marketing qualified. Yeah. Right, that's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, Rand Roger, this is I've done a lot of work in uh, path purchase and purchase decision making research. And if I understand what you do correctly, these are individuals who have already gone through the initial stages of from the time, let's say I decide I want to buy a TV or a PC. I need to do my search online, offline, you know, the impact of social media search on narrowing that brand decision making, um, you know, it could be recommendations from experts in the field or product experts. Um, but it looks like you're well past that. These are individuals who have already selected the brand. Is that correct? It is. And I, what I should say is that this is very geared towards B2B. You know, we focus on B2B tech, healthcare, and manufacturing companies for larger contract sizes. But all of these principles apply, whether you're shopping for electronics or you're shopping for Tiffany's um, from a consumer side. And if you really look at each one of these stages, they're still required for that customer's journey. Uh, Rand, we are running out of time. Do you want to wrap it up with a conclusion, Paige? So getting through those, those lists. But again, it's really all about uh, customer experience. I always recommend that you start with aligning marketing and sales first and then start to bring in the delivery side to it uh, because this is one of the harder challenges. But if you can get them to align, team alignment around the qualification criteria, the lead scoring, uh, the target list creation, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry for the super busy slide, but uh, <laughs> I just came down and it's a lot. It a lot to but this is really the readiness. So identifying what the maturity level is of the business, um, what their go-to-market strategy is, the growth model, the data model, what are the... Uh, financial equations they're using for the math model, the tech stack, et cetera, and then getting into actually putting together the marketing sales and service plans. Great. And, and we have actually for what level of maturity they're at. And just, um, and then, we'll take one more question, um, unless you want to sort of, uh, sort of wrap it up with a concluding whatever. Yeah, no, I, just the importance of being customer first throughout the entire customer journey, really. That's what RevOps is getting to, is having a, a continuous uh, thread running through. All right. Uh, anybody have one last question? Rand, how are you taking this to market? So in two ways. One is from a, a, a readiness uh, training and consulting stage. And then the second is through implementation, which is actually ultimately having us build a platform that automates a lot of the stages in a very customer first way and uh, utilizing what AI is allowing us to do now, which is allow the customers at each stage to identify what their missed opportunities are and then ask the questions so, and get their answers. All right, thank you so much. Very compelling, uh, great slides, by the way, really well designed. Um, I'm sure you could go deep into some of those slides. Oh, yeah. 20, Hours. 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I, I dropped into the chat the order in which people showed up. Um, make sure that your name is on there so I don't um, I don't forget you. Um, but I think, let's see, it's 25 after. We have uh, how many people? We have 
four, 16, 17, 18. Uh, a minute and a half would probably be about right. Um, and uh, if everybody would go on mute, I'm going to switch to the speaker view so that the person who's speaking will come up on their recording um, big. So we're starting off with John Parsons. Hey, thanks, Michael. Um, I'm John Parsons. Uh, I'm, I'm a ghostwriter, but I'm also part of a small video marketing studio. Um, all my information is in the chat. And in the interest of keeping my streak alive, I've been trying to come up with something interesting to give to the whole group at every meeting. And because we're starting to do uh, more, more remote shoots lately, um, the idea of what kind of light do you want? And there's a difference between a ring light, which most people are familiar with, and a softbox, which I brought one from our studio, this monster that takes up half my screen. And so in the chat, uh, I'm giving it. Uh, you went off mute, you went on mute. You hit mute by mistake. I'm so sorry. Uh, so in the chat, I am giving everybody a great article that explains the pros and cons of using a ring light versus a softbox. Um, cost factors and a whole bunch of other stuff. If you're if you're doing your own video or if you hire us to do your video, um, the, the the one of the biggest disadvantages to ring lights is that it gets puts a catch light, the, the little glow of the light in somebody's glasses or their in their in their eye. Very distracting, very Terminator looking. And so we and there's other limitations. So enjoy the article and um that's it. And uh, John, so one of their claims to fame is they've got a very inter interactive video technology, which is really cool. So if you've got any interest in that, uh, you should reach out to John. And of course, his ghostwriting ghost writing skills as well. All right. Um, let's move on to uh, Mark Iorio. Thanks, Michael. Um, we, uh, we've developed over the last decade a uh, platform that is cognitively based that gets people to rally around a purpose for their organization. And uh, so it, it helps uh, collate or basically get the culture inside the organization to migrate closer to the brand. And you, you're probably asking what the heck purpose does that serve? Well, you know, the backbiting, the passive aggressive behavior, the lack of collaboration, the silo mentality, goes away when you start to collaborate and look at the team as though it were a North Star or a role target. This is not about core values. This is all about uh, getting people to connect the head with the heart and then implement it. Uh, there's a process at the end where we ask each person to, uh, to uh, contribute two or three things that they can change each day that can help migrate that culture toward uh, the North Star. And, and um, you know, what we're trying to do now is, is bridge the gap between that and, and business value, the, the valuation of business, because oftentimes people say, well, you know, culture is wonderful. You know, getting the brand and the culture to align is wonderful. Getting my people to work together is wonderful. But what exactly is it that we're doing here to help the business grow? And, um, you know what what we're trying to do now is build that get that bridge between that culture moving the needle and valuation and we're we're gathering lots and lots of data to uh to back this up so um you get 95 percent of the population out there saying culture is critical it's important but really don't know how to do it and uh, or change it so here we go that's uh my, st my information is also in the chat. If you want to reach out, I'm on LinkedIn and we can have a uh, deeper conversation about it. Thank you so much, Mark. Okay, Sam Leibowitz. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Sam Leibowitz, talkradio.nyc. We're an internet radio station and we've been around almost 13 years. Yeah, I've been running the station since before people knew what podcasting was. Uh, I work with, typically with entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, small business owners, uh, very often their coaches, consultants, uh, speaker trainers, new authors. And uh, what we do that's different is we stream our shows out live. We stream the audio and the video out 
video we using a, a solution that allows us to stream to an infinite number of platforms so we hit up all the major ones youtube facebook linkedin twitter uh we just started our our, our uh twitch tv channel um and uh and one of the things that i've worked really hard over the years to instill in my hosts is this idea of working together so all my we we do host meetings once a month and they were all really good at shouting out the different shows on the network at uh, being guests on each other's shows. So it's really taking sort of a community approach to helping people to get their message out and become a thought leader in their industry. And that's me. Thank you so much. And he's got the voice to uh, to prove it. All right. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Haim Ohayon. Yeah, we have goose that give us golden egg. So when I ask people, what do you pay attention to, the goose or the egg? Most of the people say, well, I take care of the goose. Yeah, but their eyes on the egg all the time. And there they're missing out. We, we are habitual people, even our thinking is habitual. When you inhabit, you don't think, you just go. Whatever came, because you do it on autopilot. So I will make you think. When I will make you think, I will stop the habit that you're into. Yeah, and that's the key to be creative and to come with something different or better into your life. So th that's what I do for a living. I I make people think on their life and business how to get better results and better outcome. And uh, my info on the chat, and I'm open to talk to anyone. So primarily coaching, business and personal. That's the title, but I walk with people. I don't coach people. I walk with people. All right. And you're based where again? Uh, I'm in New York. New York City. Wonderful. And an ideal ideal client for you is? When you're looking to have a breakthrough, you're looking to break the glass ceiling, you're stuck in some way, we're going to have conversation. All right. Thank you so much. Up next is Stash Harrison. Stash, guest, another guest. Stash, take it away. Good afternoon. As Michael said, Stash Harrison, ah. the CEO of Market Intent. I'm, we're based in New York City in the Lower East Side, exactly at the Beastie Boys Square. Google that shit, it's a real thing. <laughs> Anyway, Market Intent is an AI data company. We're democratized in market research. What used to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, our platform provide in the hundreds or just a few thousands of dollars. We identify your most valuable customers. We analyze competitors, go to market strategy and allow a brand or its agency to analyze that and know how to position themselves compared to their customers. Um, I'll paste a link in the chat uh, where there is a sample demo dashboard um, of which we are on target to build 10,000 similar dashboard for pretty much uh, every startup brands um, currently. Um, hit me up. We are fundraising. I am looking to bring on a COO as right now I have paying customer as a startup, potentially agencies and a supermarket chain that is interested that we were not projecting until next year. So now it's scramble time to, because money is on the table, which is a good problem to have as a startup. Anyway, that's my two minutes. I'll paste some info in the chat. Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much, Stash. Okay, Mark Harry. Hi, I'm Mark Harry and I'm in the Salt Lake City area. And I am running a company called SEO Game that provides a white label service for digital marketing companies who are selling search engine opportunities, who are aggressively going after uh, that type of client and leading in with those types of clients so that they can sell um, a majority of all the other services that they also like to service and offer. Uh, I believe SEO is a lead-in door opener, and I can help digital marketers grow by having a, the right vendor in place to 
focus on selling and uh, web development, all those other great stuff. I'm going to put in the chat right now um, a way for you to connect with me. I'd love to connect. Um, if you're interested in connecting with me, make a calendar event, and I will find five, three to five referrals. Now, if you've already met with me, I figured out how to do it. I actually know these people. So, uh, Victor, Jason, we got to meet. <laughs> Mike, we got to meet again <laughs> on my bed. So, I can figure out a way to give you some uh, personal custom referrals and figure out what you're doing and become maybe a power partner as well. Uh, that's me, Mark Harry, SEO Game. Wonderful. And Mark is a super connector. He's connected me with a number of people. And we had the chance to meet when I was out in Salt Lake City. So if you saw the newsletter, you saw a picture of us in front of a statue of uh, Joseph Smith. All right. Faith Thomasus. Faith, you there? Am I off mute? No, no you're off mute. Me? Oh, hi, everyone. Faith Thomasus. And I am a message maker, which means that I am essentially a writer, but I also help clients determine what it is they want to say. Uh, so do a lot of the interviews to get them to articulate um, what they're trying to do. And from that, I do copywriting. I do name development, which feeds out of that because my specialty is saying things as succinctly as possible. So um, I'm actually on the, my back steps in Wilmington, Delaware right now because it's so gorgeous out. <gasps> I can't and um, I'm a generalist. I've got experience in all kinds of industries and I've met many of you and I look forward to meeting some more of you again. And uh, I've put my information on the chat and look forward to connecting. All right. Thank you so much. So, yeah, it was a beautiful day in the Northeast anyway. Uh, Leslie Lawton. Hi. Um, I'm a writer and creative director, and I have this experience in almost every business sector. I've been doing this a long time. I specialize in helping sustainability professionals feel less stuck, frustrated, and compromised. Um. The trick is essentially, it's not a trick, it takes a, a lot of creative thinking, is to create a sense of urgency that makes business sense. I help concerned and farsighted leaders overcome a, just a huge number of obstacles by telling the truth, speaking with authenticity, conviction, and the power of emotion. We have a rare opportunity now dealing with climate change getting to net zero to transform the nature of business. Thank you. Wonderful. And uh, how's the weather out there in Novato? Oh, it's fine. It's windy and cold. <laughs> it's not raining. That's good. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Okay. So if anybody's got any clients who are interested in sustainability in particular, Leslie is your, is your woman to reach out to. Sharon, our newest, our, one of our newest members. Yes, hi. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be a part of this group. Um, um, I'm Sharon Romanian. I'm based in Los Angeles. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of OneSource Labs, which is a user experience research firm. Uh, we also do um, UX design. So I have a small team that helps me with UX design and research as well. Um, the majority of our clients are Fortune 500 companies, Fortune 100, and um, also larger advertising and digital advertising agencies and consulting firms. Because, you know, those are the only people that can afford to <laughs> pay for research <laughs> or are willing to spend the money for research. Uh, we have experience across all industries. Uh, one of our differentiators is that we go in and uh, we uh, learn about the project for every single project, learn about what the design phase they're in, what who their users are, what their objectives are, what's their timeline and budget, and we come up with a um, customized user experience research plan for that specific project for the highest return on investment. Um, 
Um, I know I wanted to say something else. So in a, in two weeks on Tuesday, I'm presenting capabilities. So um, I'll be happy to answer any questions when that comes up. Wonderful. Yes. And not everybody. I actually didn't know, not to say that I should know, the difference between UI and UX. And somebody explained, may have been Sharon who explained it to me. But uh, I'm sure she'll she'll answer that question for those who still have it in two weeks. Exactly. And also the difference between UX research and market research. Very different. Okay. Russ Brizano. Uh, yeah. Hi. I'm Russ Brizano. My company is RGB Design Group. I'm a website and graphic designer that's passionate about creating stunning designs that help my clients' businesses thrive. I've been in the industry for over 25 years, and my expertise spans both website and graphic design, from logos, brochures, to, um, well, I said logos twice. <laughs> I can create effective and eye-catching designs that truly reflect your brand's personality and vision. My collaborative, my collaborative approach sets me apart. I work closely with my clients to understand their unique needs and goals, whether that's direct clients or creative agencies. My agency partnerships are built on trust and mutual respect, and I collaborate closely with my agency partners to ensure that the designs I create meet the specific requirements of their clients. My commitment to quality is also a big part of what I do. I use the latest tools and technologies to create designs that are not only visually stunning, but also functionally and user-friendly. My goal is to create uh, is my goal is to create designs that not only look great, but also help you achieve your business goals. Whether you need a website design, a complete rebranding, or a simple brochure, I'm here to help. A good referral uh, could be someone who needs a website or redesign their existing site, someone who needs a new logo or brand identity, or someone who needs marketing collateral or packaging design. I pride myself on being able to create effective and eye-catching designs and truly reflect my client's unique brand and visions. And that's the first time I read that because I'm trying to create a uh, way to introduce myself that's uh, better than what I've been doing in the past. All right, yeah, keep, keep working on it. It'll, 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 you'll know it by, by heart soon. Mike, uh, I know you're having trouble joining. Mike is a guest, no, are you with us? I figured it out, yeah. I had one loose cord, but of course it was, you know, the 17th one I checked. So, um, Lance Armstrong, right? He was the greatest bike racer of all time. Seven Tour de France championships. It's never been done before. It'll never be done again. But even at his best, at his peak, and even with his on his steroids, I could have beaten Lance in a bike race if he was riding a tricycle. So where am I going with all of this? Well, while that's a little bit of a joke, it's actually what I see all the time. I see people going up against their competition and wondering why their competition beats them time and time again. And so what do they do? They go back just like Lance would do if I beat him. He would go back to his routine. He'd swim a little longer. He'd run a little bit more. He'd do a little more aerobics every day. But when we came back out, no matter how hard he worked, or how many books he read, it wouldn't matter. He's still riding a tricycle and I'm on a street bike. He cannot beat his competition that way. When I meet business owners like this, I kick them off their tricycle and we work together to build a better bike because that's the only way you're ever going to beat your competition. My healthy business practices have led a dozen different concepts from startup to past $100 million in annual sales. Ever heard of Victoria's Secret Pink? Well, if, you hadn't, if it hadn't been for me, you may not have. I was there when there were three people on the team. I left after we got to a billion dollars. But today, I do that for small businesses. So let's have a chat with anyone who's not getting all of what they deserve out of their business. Right. Did you say Victoria's Secret and there was something else in there? Yep. Victoria's Secret. Yeah. Pink. 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 Okay. Right. Wonderful. Pink Great. is a very big deal. Big background. Rochelle Lisner, take it away. Okay. It's Rochelle from Dynamic Business Growth. And I always say it's Dynamic Business Growth and not Schlep Along Business Growth. You know, very often, uh, I believe that clients have a really rough time speaking about their business in a compelling way. Very often, they're long-winded, boring, and common. So when speaking about your business, I ask everybody, are you storytelling or boring telling? I can't tell you how many boring telling situations I've been in front of. And creating dynamic business stories 
that promote growth is where I do some of my best work. So that's it for today. You know, let's tell us about uh, how your uh, your offerings coming. You you have a workshop. Still working uh, on that? Not, uh, I do. I'm working on my workshop and it should be ready by the end of May, early June. And we'll keep you posted when that happens. And you want to describe that workshop? Again, how do we speak about our business so that what's the story? What do you want to be known for? What's the story that you tell that based on the story, I'm going to see your level of expertise. So we don't have to drown each other with a lot of data. In, uh, most people try to put a size 10 foot of data in a size 10, you know, like a size six shoe, and it doesn't work. So uh, key, I'll keep you posted. Get ready to rock when the date is available. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. It was an interesting, I saw an interesting, listen to an interesting podcast uh, today, um, Hidden Brain about persuasiveness. It's worth looking into. All yeah, right. Uh, Victor Lee. Thanks, Michael. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Victor Lee, and uh, my business is built on networking. So what I do is I connect people and opportunities. Uh, what I do is I look for interesting companies, interesting situations, interesting opportunities, and find clients for them. So that's kind of step one in my process. Uh, and you know that's how I collect referral fees. Step two in the process uh, is I enlist my hapless friends who uh, have great connections. So uh, our host, Michael, is one of them. So there's a project I've launched with Michael, and it really, it really got it, it really kicked off. I think yesterday is, I could be fair to say, Michael, right? So, so that could, that could be some really interesting opportunities. Um, I have a strategy called Foxes and Hedgehogs, where I'd be happy to meet with anybody who really likes to be a super connector, network with lots of folks, and find interesting business opportunities. So I'd love, I, like a bunch of you, a lot of, I think about half the people I've met here, I've had conversations with. Um, and obviously, you know, Mark, Mark Harry, I'm going to talk to you again tomorrow. Happy, I think uh, Rochelle, I think we're going to talk again soon. Yep. And so and happy to, you know, re-meet people or meet new people. So in the meantime, uh, to kind of promote the idea of networking, and get, um, I also have a podcast that focuses on networking, and it's called uh, Things I Didn't Learn at Harvard. So Michael has been a guest, uh, a couple other folks here, you know, we're chatting about potentially guesting on the podcast. And I'd be happy to tell you about that as well. So it's nice meeting everybody. Nice, nice seeing old, old friends, meeting new friends. And I look forward to connecting with everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Good timing. All right. Roger <laughs> Brooks. Okay. Hi, everybody. Well, Sharon, nice to meet a fellow market researcher. And yes, we do very different kinds of research. Uh, I kind of come in on the front end. So when a company is considering developing a new product or service, what I do is the concept evaluation to really uncover, really understanding the uh, the appeal and purchase uh, demand for the product and what features and benefits would drive trial or usage. And then when that's all said and done, that product is developed and that goes to people like Sharon for usability, usability research. But I think the common theme that we have of all the kinds of research that I do is it, uh, is it reduces the risk in business decision-making by capturing the input of, in my case, a representative sample of customers or targeted non-customers so that you remove that seat of the pants decision-making. So that's kind of the world I live in. I've lived in for a long time and I've taken that to uh, a private practice getting out of the corporate world uh, a couple of years ago. And so I try to do that for small players like uh, nonprofits, did a lot of work with a nonprofit last year Startups are a natural. I wrote the research program to help launch a startup back in the day, and also my passion, the wine industry. So that's all about me. And already connected with several people, and and I think Stash is sitting on a gold mine, just to name one. Yeah, I, that's uh, Roger. I thought of you when I when I met with Stash, but I guess you beat me to it. So um, yeah, we've yeah. we we've uh, had several conversations and. I think uh, Stash, he's, there's a lot he has not said uh, about predictive analytics that is just a mind bender. Yeah, and he's got a ton of data behind it. Okay, Jason Cement. Okay, um, Jason Cement, I'm out in LA. I run a marketing agency called Get Visible. Actually, I do two things. One is Get Visible, 
And so that's where we design and build websites and then promote them. So search engine rankings, social media, all that kind of stuff. And then I think more appropriate maybe for this group is my other identity, hence my Batman in the background, is an e-commerce platform that's been around since 2003. It's called Adricom. I'll put it in the chat. And it is, it's sort of like e-commerce on steroids in the sense that if you have a client that needs a robust web presence with some form of transactionality, it doesn't have to just be a catalog, but where there's some form of exchange of information, like a subscription, it could be a part of that. It's just a very uh, customized solution that you can deliver like a custom solution to a client at a quarter of the price of, of either starting from scratch or using a Magento or a Shopify type system. It just give you one quick example. There is a, a company that sells pickleball paddle, uh, paddles, and uh, you can customize the entire paddle online in terms of the logo, the color of all the different components. So they have a thing called the configurator. So you can really create custom buying opportunities for different businesses. Think of like, uh, uh, well, you can kind of get the idea. But um, I've been doing this a long time since the late 90s. When I graduated law school, I went right into business and worked with clients all over the map, do a lot of service providers, um, e-commerce, of course, and then we do the whole WordPress existence through Get Visible. So um, love being here. Thank you. And a true patriot with the USA hat. What is that? Is that go, like yes. president of the United States of America? There you go. <laughs> all right. Joni Abraham. You may be on mute, Joni. You're on mute. Joni, you're on mute. Hello, everybody. I never mentioned that I actually am in the Detroit area, so that's where I'm located. My heart's in New York. I was there 20 years. My specialty, as many of you know, is creating original content for social media um, communication. And we create video that really disrupts the advertising industry. It's short and it's cheap and it's very high quality, and it's very cool. Um, I have a great mix of talent working for me, and we're really, you know, I've been working on launching this product for a long time, got very serious about it about five months ago, and uh, we just started our sales um, process two weeks ago, and my hat's off to Jason. Jason, thank you. You will be in my memories forever. Our first um, hopeful client, their first request for a contract I got through Jason. And um, very excited about the woman that I'll be working with. Very, yes, it's a very big deal. When you put new products in the market, it's very hard to get started. And uh, my typical, uh, what I'm looking for are lifestyle retailers that do about a million a month. To uh, for, it's, We have 10 stories that we sell for $18,000. A month so that's the kind of price tags we're dealing with so is my it, information is it, in the chat is it retailers or brands or both both okay i mean um jason led me to a company that is gold star tool and it takes me a long time to remember that name they sell professional sewing machines and all the accoutrement that go with the sewing process. So they have everything available for that particular um, line of business. That's a good fit. The example that I think the demo that you gave for one of your clients was sort of a, a jacket coming together as if it were. Yeah, yeah, sewing. yeah. That was our last vivid. We create, those are ours. We're putting right. those together for promotional purposes. Right. right. But it sort of brings, it brings to mind the concept of, of, of you know, sewing together, sewing clothes. Oh, I never thought of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What um, a great idea. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> my pleasure. That's free. Free advice. Oh. Um, any, did I miss anybody before I go myself? Um, if not, I will put the timer on for myself. Uh, so my name is Michael Bendit. Um, besides running the uh, Trusted Referral Network, my core business is actually representing software development teams. 
And what that means is, as, as many of you know, uh, people who are software developers and also many marketers tend not to be real extroverts. Um, and so they're good at what they do, but they're not great at selling what they do. Um, and so I fill that gap for many of them. I have about a dozen teams. Um, they do their own sales as well, um, but I'm out there um, hunting for them, looking for new opportunities and matching them with projects that really fit their capabilities. So people come to me when they're not really sure you know, where to find a team that has the right skill set um, for a particular type of job. Um, because, you know, maybe it's the technology they're using or something unique about what they're doing and they don't know where to go. Um, I've selected or built a, a pool of these dozen teams that have a pretty broad range of capabilities. Um, I focus mostly in the marketing world, uh, also do work with startups. Uh, and in the marketing world, I do a lot of work with digital agencies. So agencies that do this type of work but don't always have the capacity or the right skills within in-house uh, because of the nature of things that come over the transom that just may not be the technologies that they work with or whatever. So uh, love to meet other digital marketers, uh, digital agencies, um, and that's my time. So I'm going to jump back into the gallery mode Um and we have just four minutes left, so I guess I timed it reasonably well. Um, now, if you haven't put your uh, LinkedIn into the chat, do so now. And also, everybody should open up their chat, uh, click on the three buttons on the bottom, the three dots on the bottom, that opens up more. And the first item is save chat. Uh, that way you'll have all of the, um, the information that people have dropped in there. Uh, if you want to connect with somebody, now's a good time to mark down their name or cap capture their uh, their LinkedIn information. Uh, if you forget for some reason their name or whatever, you can always reach out to me. Uh, thank you, Rand, for the presentation, the compelling presentation, really, really beautifully done. Um, and we're always looking for more members, right? This is a, uh, a group that uh, is... Uh, consists of marketing services providers. Everybody's got their own niche um, and you never know where your clients may need services that you don't provide that you can bring to the table with, uh, with a partner uh, through referral, through collaboration. Uh, that's what this is all about. Questions, comments. I heard from uh, Alan that he's uh, recently got a, a, um, a project uh, with uh, another member of the team, another member of the group. So that's that's good news. Joni, Joni's working with him. I'm very excited about it. And I've been working with John and I'm very excited about what John's doing for me. So this has been really great for me. Good, wonderful. I'm probably your best um, participant. <laughs> no, that's not true. You guys all interact a lot. I forgot. I, I've been out there in this different kind of specialty. But, yeah, but that's it's it's wonderful to, to learn about your your skills and, and it's very specific so people know where to how to connect you. Rochelle, yeah. did you have a question or comment? No, but I just want to wish everybody it's we're into holiday season. So I want to wish everybody whatever your whatever your uh heart desires, happy Passover, happy Easter. Um, get a great Easter egg, you know, don't break it, don't crack a tooth on the matzah. So just, <laughs> enjoy, just enjoy the season right now. I mean, you know, enjoy the family, friends, the spirituality, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Yeah, right. And the, and the good weather. Thank you for reminding us of that. Well, actually, Wonderful. everyone should keep in mind that the day after Easter is when all the chocolate goes on sale. <laughs> thank you for that reminder yeah, uh, right. most important, stash. <laughs> wonderful and yeah, stash my, you probably michael, have you okay john sorry my, michael uh, david libby just dropped a, a wonderful con uh, lead into my inbox um the other oh, day and it's just been this i keep saying it but this group is the best of people who are paying it forward and mm. keep looking to help each other i'm just i'm thrilled to be here yeah. Wonderful ditto, ditto, ditto. Ditto on David Libby. Just got a yeah. absolute, and he really worked to the referral and really helped the guy pay attention. It was yeah. super helpful. And, 
Yeah. And Leslie, thank good. you for the uh, referral. I really appreciate it. Sure, sure. You're welcome. Russ. All right. Thank you so much. Top of the hour. Enjoy the evening or afternoon, wherever you happen to be. And uh, we'll see you uh, on Wednesday uh, next week uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern. Bye, guys. Thanks, everyone.